Hello, Moose Academy learners. We know you want to learn more about backing natural turquoise cabochons, so here we're going to do a deep dive into it. Now, you know this is a vital step in the lapidary process that provides stability and enhances the appearance of your turquoise gems. So, what's the best backing material to use? It all boils down to your preference. We're going to present to you three options for backing materials that you can learn and assess their pros and cons. Tools, gloves to protect your hands, a wine time mixing bow, a mixing tool or spatula, or a protection mat that can be placed on your table. You can choose a kitchen trash bag or a silicon mat or a non-stick pan, as long as it's dry and clean, and it provides elasticity once the back of your stones is dry, the slab can be popped off the mat easily. Your protection mat also makes sure that the backing material does not penetrate into your tabletop. Option one, let's get started with using Davcom plastic steel putty as a backing material for your stones. First thing first, why Davcon? Well, if you're dealing with individually backed stones, Davcon's hardness is your best bet. But let's not take my word for it. One of its pros is that it's stable and strong, while the cons are Davcon is quite heavy and expensive. The drying time of Davcon in room temperature is about 12 hours. Now, let's talk about mixing. It's all about that perfect blend. The magic ratio is 9 to 1 by weight or 2.5 to 1 by volume for resin to hardener. You can certainly just visualize the volume and even if you mixed with 2 to 1 ratio, it would still work. Grab a mixing bowl, a spatula, or a picnic spoon. In this video, we're using plastic picnic spoons and knives along with the mixing tool that came with your Dabcon. Now that you're ready, let's get mixing. Plastic steel putty is formulated to be a dense mix that can be applied easily to the back of your slabs without running or sagging. Add the hardener to the resin and mix thoroughly in a mixing bowl using a spatula or a mixing tool. For best results, the product should be kept mixed and applied at room temperature. Mix for at least 3 to 5 minutes so the material blends well. Notice that we use separate tools to scoop out the hardener and separate tools to scoop out the mixer. So mix for about four minutes, five minutes, four minutes, making sure that everything is completely streaks free and all mixed out. sure the white really blends into the black so this material is completely mixed out so do so for about four minutes until you feel like it's ready and you can see any hardener pieces poking out until your mixer looks like this type of texture. It's ready to apply it over to the backing of your stones. Once mixed thoroughly, apply Dabcon mix right away to the back of your slabs to avoid the mix hardening or becoming harder to apply. When applying it to the back of your stone, press slowly and firmly to ensure maximum surface contact and avoid trapping air. And then press your slab with backing against a dry and clean plastic bag. Make sure that the thickness of your backing is about 1 to 2 millimeter or your preferred thickness. Do not press the slab all the way against the surface, as you do need to keep a good amount of backing material on the slab. Again, here you can choose another flat surface mat to place your backed slabs on, such as a silica mat or a non-stick pan. You can check on the side to even out, to level out the thickness of the stone. Uh, this stone is actually a little thinner on the right-hand side than the left-hand side. 
and that's why we want to press on the thicker side more and leaving the putty to fill out the other side so you can level it out a little bit just in case you slap it unevenly and let's do another one so before you back it you want to select the side of the stone which side that looks better for you to polish up and for this stone because the other this side looks a little porous so we're gonna fill the pore side with just sort of like a little drip of putty like this amount and you're gonna press it so you can always adjust the amount of putty by lightly pressing onto the stone just making sure that the putty fills on every pore and every hole in the back of the stone and making sure that it's flat and level so it's not uneven for this piece of stone uh, slab we see a lot of dips on one side so we're gonna use the backing to basically fill the back of the stone. Technically, this side could be a little bit better looking because of the color, the green color and multicolored, but because it's got like imperfections here, so we're gonna fill it with the backing. So when you flip it, you can certainly polish up the other side successfully. So we're gonna do so by making sure that you contact. Okay. Right, so we're gonna press onto the surface and make sure that there's a little excessive amount of backing material that comes out of the stone. That means that it is completely filled in the back. Let's continue doing this. Just repeat it until we're ready to let it dry, okay? This stone is slapped in the back and we're gonna polish up the rough side eventually. There you go. So we're gonna let it dry for overnight and we're gonna go for and um, check on it. Just make sure that the stones are all flat and the overall thickness of the stone and the backing in com uh, combined are even. All right. Make sure to wear gloves before you apply the backing and make sure to clean out any backing material on your counter or anything because it's gonna harden over in the next couple hours so make sure you clean out or just use a huge piece of plastic bag before you start the operation here you go so we're backing a couple of beautiful slabs from different mines but once you're done with your operations you can wipe your mixing pad down with and you can you reuse it next time even your container if while there's still fluid here, I'm gonna be sealing my hardener with a piece of plastic and I'm gonna just reuse it next time, but don't wait for too long until you, you reuse it next time. And now, after the second morning, all the DEPCON material is pretty much dried up. Let's take a look by easily peeling it off the plastic bag. And we can see a lot of these material are flat in the back. Um, some of the plastic bag wrinkles actually got into the backing, which is all right because overall it's all flat. And 
check on the side of the material, try to bend it a little bit and see if it's still soft. And overall, I think we did a pretty good job. Let's just look at the thickness of the backing. I'll just check on the backing if it does cover the overall part of the, it's pretty satisfying to peel it off the plastic bag. And there you go. You can dock it now to your docking stick or slap it further. You can choose to do whatever you like doing. We encourage you to try different ways to work with your backing and find what is the best method for your own workflow. Next option two, using fiberglass resin with clay powder and cement color. The ratio here is about one to one or two parts resin and one part clay powder, depending on your material. You can try out different ratios and test durability and drying time. This option works well for backing a group of stones as the mix is more liquidish than DevCon. If you have enrolled in our Moose Academy courses, this is the backing option that we demonstrated in the course. For this method, you can use any clay powder, even facial clay powder or bentonite clay, as long as it provides a breathable structure for the backing while binding well with any glue agent. You may search online or in your local market to find affordable clay powder. For fiberglass resin, the bundle brand is a good option, but any brand will work. Talking about the pros and cons. Pros. Affordable and dries fast in about an hour. Cons. Strong smell. Feel free to experiment with different ratios to find the sweet spot for doing durability and drying time. Lastly, option three, use epoxy with clay powder or bentonite clay. You can also try a two-part epoxy mix with one part clay powder or bentonite clay or Aztec clay. The key here is to wait until everything's dry from the inside out. Otherwise, it might cause trouble when you begin shaping your slab. Pros, affordability. Cons, dries a bit slow. So here you have it, three options to back your turquoise cabochons. Whether you go with the stability of DevCon, the liquidity of fiberglass resin, or the patience of epoxy, each option has its pros and cons. Again, at the end of the day, you can always experiment and decide on which one you prefer. To learn more about the advanced techniques of cutting turquoise cabochons, enroll in our academy courses on our website linked below. Happy backing, Moose learners!